of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, which is our name day, our feast day, as a parish dedicated to the honor and glory of the Holy Trinity. Recognizing God's call to live in his love and to share it, we call to mind the times that we have sinned so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory Lord God pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old before your time. Ever since God created man upon the earth, ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord, your God, did for you in Egypt before your eyes. This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord, your God, is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. The word of the Lord, the Lord is faithful and his works to be trusted. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. By the breath of his mouth all their host. He spoke and it came to be. He commanded it stood. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Yes, the Lord's eyes are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, 
Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. With you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshiped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now this Memorial Day weekend, we also remember the service members, men and women throughout the armed services uh, who have served our country and especially those who have died those who have come back wounded, and also all of our loved, beloved family members who've passed on to the next life. In a lot of ways, we talk about how they did their duty, how they fulfilled a purpose, how they met a challenge. And today, Jesus challenges us. He gives us a duty. He commands us, go, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Here's the expectation. Here's the job description. Here's the challenge. How do you and I do that? How do you make disciples? We could just think about that the rest of the day, couldn't we? We could all come together and share our thoughts and we could have many books, many podcasts, many videos. But if you're like me and you sometimes pause and wonder, hmm, how do we make disciples? You might first ask the question, what is a disciple? And as a second or third grader would tell me, well, Father, a disciple is a follower. A follower. So how do we make followers of Jesus? Well, in order to be a follower of someone or something, you have to be connected to that someone or something, don't you? You have to have some sort of relationship that's established. If you're a follower of the rules, then you 
need to know the rules. If you're a follower of a coach, then you need to listen to the coach. So how do we become followers connected to Jesus? Unless we first encounter him. There's the first introductory meeting, the first date, so to say. How have you, or rather, how has Jesus encountered you? How do you and I help others meet Jesus for the first time so they can get to know him in some capacity and in some way with their will choose to follow him a little or a lot? I mean, there's concrete ways, right? You put the goggles on them and you brainwash them. No, I'm joking. No brainwashing here. I know it's early on a Memorial Day weekend, but I wanted to try the joke. Okay. But here's a simple thing. If you want them to encounter Jesus so they have the opportunity to decide whether or not they want to be for or against Jesus, then present them yourself, your Christian self. Because when you and I were baptized and took on our faith, we took on the life of Jesus. The life of Jesus is inside of you. And it's among us, his body. And the Holy Spirit moves in us. If, you know, we allow him. And what happens then is that we can cry out, as we heard in the second reading, Abba, Father. Is that you and I have this relationship with our Father where we can cry out for help and we can depend on Him. And depending on God, our Father, we have confidence. (laughs) The life of Jesus in you. And then as you and I live the life of Jesus, is, it's like the words of the gospel shape our lives and become evident in, in what we do and what we say and what we don't do and what we don't say. It's the words of the gospel coming to life through you. People come to know Jesus and God the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, through you. And maybe, just maybe, or most positively, is that the peace that you exude, the love that you share, the hope that you inspire, moves the heart of the one in front of you. That through you they encounter Jesus and they want some more. And then, you can go into those concrete ways. Ah, come to adoration. It's not important right away that you understand everything about it, but just come. I want you to come and experience something, someone. Let's pray the rosary together. Will you join me and my family at Mass? I know it's kind of strange because you're unfamiliar with it, but we'll help explain it before and after. And little by little, I think you'll find some peace. You'll find some direction in your life. Let's go for a walk. I'd love to hear about how you've been doing. It's those concrete ways then, but it starts with our Christian witness, the life of Jesus within us, the Holy Trinity forming and shaping our whole lives. This is the place of the Holy Trinity, this church. But more importantly than this building being the Holy Trinity is you and me. Buildings come and go, but our souls are immortal. They'll live forever. And that's where it's most important that we have the Trinity inside.
Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers to the Father for the needs of the world and the church. For the church and her mission of making disciples of all nations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world and for an increase in faith, hope, and love among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been afflicted by violence and hardship, and for all who work to bring them relief, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering of our community and for the ministries that attend to them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of those who have died in service to our nation and for all who continue to risk their lives in military service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, especially Elaine Huss. And for those who have no one else to pray for them and for the intentions of this Mass, living in deceased members of the Edward and Bernice Albrecht family, Don Hansen, Paul Venteicher, our parish family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers now that we all hold silently in our own hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And together we offer our parish vocations prayer. God our Father, Father, we, we beg, beg you for an increase in religious vocations. vocations. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your Spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts a desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious. As we entrust to your care all who seek to do your will, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn of preparation for the altar and gifts will be hymn number 479. O God Almighty Father, hymn number 479. Thank you. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, so sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of the same, for our good and all this holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance and their equality and majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night, on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, 
We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is in the Diocese of Sioux City, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope and Walker our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Blessed is God who lives forever, and blessed is his kingdom. We bless the God of heaven, and we shall praise him before all the living, for he has shown us his merciful love. Be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We bless the God of heaven, and we shall pray. The communion hymn will be hymn number 853. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Hymn number 853.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess our eternal Holy Trinity in undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our announcements this weekend include next Sunday is the Eucharistic procession to celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi after the 10 a.m. Mass. We will process around our Catholic campus. If you will if you would like to be part of this procession, but will not be attending the 10 a.m. Mass, please wait outside or in the conference room until the Mass goers have left and then come into the church. Holy Trinity will be hosting our annual Vacation Bible School on June 7th through the 11th this year from 8 to 11.30 a.m. at St. Edmund School. You may sign up your little conductors today in the narthex for their ride on the Rocky Railway or by going online to our parish homepage. And there are cookies as you leave today in celebration of our parish's feast day, the Most Holy Trinity. The Parish Life Committee members are hosting. So out in the narthex, uh, help yourself to a cookie. But probably only take one, because uh, we want to keep some for 10 a.m. mass, you know? <laughs> but maybe if you're under the age of seven and can eat one within 30 seconds, you can have a second. No. <laughs> Well, we wish you all well, especially those who have traveled from afar to come home for this Memorial Day weekend. Welcome back. And we also, those on the live stream, of course, we remember you and love you as well. And um, we're grateful for uh, any of our, our veterans who are here today and those who can't be for your service to our country and to peace. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn will be hymn number 475. Come now, Almighty King. Hymn number 475. Ever victorious, come out.